Thank you, Corrine. Hello, everyone. I hope all of you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. Thanks for making time to be with us on the phone today. This morning, I'm joined by ESPN Vice President of Production, Seth Markman, and NFL Network Senior Vice President of Programming and Production, Mark Benzel. Before we get to questions, I'd like to invite Seth and Mark to share a few thoughts. And Seth, let's start with you. Hey, thanks, Ali. Uh, hope everyone is doing well, as, as, as Ali mentioned. Um, look, this is our 40th anniversary of ESPN presenting the NFL Draft. It's safe to say we've never had a year like this. Very challenging circumstances in the midst of COVID-19. Yet, we have a great opportunity here to bring fans across the country a little bit of hope, a little bit of joy, maybe a bit of an escape from what we're all experiencing day to day. You know, with this unique partnership with the NFL Network um, and some of the things we're putting together, like Draftathon, we have the ability to assist COVID-19 relief efforts, pay tribute to healthcare workers and others on the front line of the pandemic. We want to stress that we're also doing this adhering to proper social distancing guidelines and local workplace rules that have been put in place during the pandemic. We're really excited to collaborate with the NFL Network. As I mentioned, we have a, uh, a real all-star group, as we've said, combining our ESPN team with the NFL Network team. And I think it's going to be a real win for the viewers, both on our ABC broadcast and this combination ESPN-NFL Network broadcast. With that, I'll turn it over to a guy I've known for a long time and respected, is Mark Quintel. more than that, as I've seen the setup 
we've actually expanded to two different control rooms for each um, for each of our broadcasts. So what, all the people that would normally be in one, we've now spread it out to two. Everybody sort of has their own desk, their own area. The other thing is um, we are mandating that everybody wear masks um, at ESPN for our telecast. So not on the air, obviously, but I mean everybody behind the scenes in the control room. So it's tricky on a lot of levels. I mean, you're talking about producers wearing masks trying to communicate with the talent and everything that's going on in this broadcast is not ideal, but we do believe it's the safest environment. And the governor of Connecticut has also kind of told us that we need to do it that way. So I feel really good about it. We've had constant discussions with our employees. We have more coming just about the safety. We've never forced anyone to come into the building if they don't feel comfortable. Um, And I think we're in a good spot. I don't have a total number. We can probably get that to you. Alex can get that to you offline. We're still working through that, but I will tell you it's significantly less overall uh, than a normal draft year. We'll go to Sam Farmer with the Los Angeles Times, and then Peter King with NBC. Thanks for doing this, guys. Uh, can you uh, give us an idea of, of some of the technology that you might use, or that you plan to use, maybe beyond Zoom. Are there anything, uh, sort of new technologies that will help in the production of this? And, and, and of course, what it might look like. What, 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 how we would differentiate this from a, from a typical draft. Mark, you want to talk about the technology, just as yeah. far as like the, um, prospects, commissioner, and all of that, and I can go into kind of what it looks like? Yeah. Well, obviously, uh, as it was announced, the commissioner will be um, making the picks remotely. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have 58 prospects spread out all over the country um, that will um, uh, be joining us via, via Wi-Fi uh, signals. Um, we also have um, various clubs coaches, uh, plus a, a number of elements of special picks and a number of elements that um, uh, Shad Hudson tributes to first responders uh, and medical professionals. Uh, that's a long way of saying, uh, I think at last count, there was something in the neighborhood of about 170, 180 various elements of seeds coming uh, from various parts of the country. Uh, to manage that, <coughs> we grouped them. Uh, prospects, general managers, coaches, uh, and others. Uh, and actually, we're, we're running them through call centers, video call centers, um, that will collect them all and then send them on to ESPN in batches of smaller groups to make it manageable. Because uh, in fairness, I mean, Seth and his team are fantastic, but the number of potential things that you can do at any given moment, uh, the number of uh, assets that you have, the number of sources that you have is just mind-boggling. Uh, uh, so we're trying to make sure that we streamline that into ESPN, into Bristol, so that uh, so that it becomes more manageable. Uh, we also have uh, used uh, a number of technologies to make sure that um, we have as many backups as we can, um, whether it happens to be Wi-Fi, whether it's uplinks, that type of thing. And I think that's really the, the challenge here is twofold. First of all, is to make sure all the technologies work. Um, uh, and that's been a massive effort by uh, a number of people, including our IT, NFL IT departments and various, the two broadcasting departments and engineering departments. Um, and the second thing is to make sure that uh, when Seth and his team uh, produce both broadcasts, that um, that we have an idea what we're trying to accomplish. I and mean, clearly it is about drafting players, but even more clearly it's about uh, setting the tone uh, that we understand that there's something much larger than us uh, going on in the world. And how do we set that tone first thing on Thursday night, and how do we continue to maintain it uh, through the three days of the draft? And uh, we're working very hard with Seth and his team to make sure that we're accomplishing that, uh, as well as using all the technology and all the thousand points of light coming in from all over the country to make sure that uh, we're providing the best draft possible. Yeah, it's perfect. I would just add, um you know, Mark laid it out really well. I think, you know, I just want to thank our colleagues in 
Disney's DTCI technology team, who's also worked closely with Mark and Group um, in the NFL, and, and has been just doing an unbelievable job for the past month, keeping our shows on the air, transitioning all of our talent to home cameras. So that that's what you're going to notice the most from a, I think the second part of your question, Sam, what it looked like. Um, you know, Trey Wingo will be um, solo hosting this for ESPN NFL Network broadcast in Bristol on his own. Uh, we do have Susie Culver with him. She's going to be trying to do some interviews with prospects, hopefully if the technology holds. Uh, when guys get drafted, um, Susie will do some of the interviews that she normally does. Everybody else will be on home cameras. So, as Mark mentioned, there's so many different feeds coming in. On the EVC side, we do have a few more people in studio. Um, again, they'll be spread out. It'll look differently. But we have Reese Davis, Maria Taylor, and Jesse Palmer that are going to be in the studio together, um, just based on pure geography and the there, how close they are to Bristol, um, it was easier to get them uh, into studio. We just, you know, from the ESPN NFL side, we were just trying to be as safe as possible, keeping as many people as home at home as, as possible. So we'll go to Peter King, and then Dan Caesar with the Post Dispatch. Uh, good morning, guys. Can you just tell me how you're going to do? You know, normally you have cameras in teams' draft rooms, you know, for the far away wide angle shots. Have any GMs or coaches agreed to let you put a camera where they're doing the draft? And if so, who? Uh, I guess I can jump there. Um, the, com- the commissioner uh, meeting with the teams, meeting with the various committees. Um, and I should note that the league itself has talked about the ESPN and proper social distancing. The draft itself, um, the execution of the draft, um, is, will be held the same way. Um, coaches will be individually in one place, GMs will be individually in another place. Uh, that's happening across the league, all 32 teams. Uh, we're also going to place cameras in all of those locations, all the coaches, all the GMs. Uh, they have protocols in terms of what we can show and when we can show it. Uh, they're not all the time. Um, but we have general access to them, and also it's designed by the league um, to make sure that in an unusual situation that uh, all the competitive um, uh, areas of the draft uh, are equal and that everyone's having, you know, has the same uh, technology and the same availability uh, to each other and to their other resources. So uh, the answer is all teams will have uh, cameras, I think teams, all coaches and all GMs will have cameras uh, in where they are drafted. We'll go to Dan Seaver and then Kevin Draper with the New York Times. Hello, just wanted to see how complicated this is compared to a normal draft and also other events. Yeah, I, I'll jump in. I, I, this is the most complicated event that I personally have been involved in, and I've been in ESPN, uh, it'll be 27 years in June, so I'll let Mark answer that as well, but I, the coordination that it's taking um, and the, you know, the, the, the just magnitude of the event that we need to do here, and as Mark mentioned, the amount of fees that are coming in, uh, the technology that we're trying to use, all preparing for this where we can't, you know, we haven't been face to face with our employees to have any kind of meetings. Um, you know, obviously we're doing like everybody else. We've done, you know, virtual meetings. Um, I myself haven't even been in the ESPN building in three weeks and, you know, planning on coming in next week for the first time in a while. And so it's a lot of other people. So it's just been, it's complicated, and now we're adding, you know, the joint broadcast, which is 100% the right thing to do, but, you know, that adds another layer of kind of complications, and, you know, we are also producing the ABC broadcast, um, you know, at ESPN's uh, headquarters as well, so that's another complication. So I I just don't know what I can compare it to. Um, it, it's <laughs> certainly unique, and, um, you know, we're excited about it, and, you know, it's sort of kind of something that 
you know, ESPN employees, and I'll speak for Mark, and I know many people at the NFL Network, we, we, we do enjoy challenges. This isn't one we've ever wanted to have and hopefully never have again, but um, I know everybody's going to rise up to, to this challenge, and uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that you say kind of this is what we want to do, and they just make it happen, and um, I feel really confident, but I will say it, it's, it is damn complicated. Well, I didn't, I'm, I'm a little bit older than Seth, but I'd say the same thing. Uh, I hope that you've been involved in you know, Super Bowl, NBA Finals, Olympics, I mean, you name it. Um, I, I, there's nothing that even comes close to this. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of challenges, all the fees and everything. Uh, that's exactly the agree. The, the thing we're really focused on is communication. Um, not just communicating with so many more people uh, than we ever have before simultaneously. But uh, communi- communicating with them, most of them remotely, uh, and, and, and trying to make sure that, that all works. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be a, a huge, huge part of what we do is um, making sure not only that we have all the elements that we need, but making sure that everybody knows when they're needed, what we're going to do, that type of thing, all in real time. And that's a huge challenge for everybody. Uh, I'd also say that with that, that look, obviously, uh, we're here doing this, um, and nobody's happy for the obviously the reason why it's just horrific. Um, that said, I think everybody involved, and I think I can speak for Seth's people, um, we realize that not just this is not a normal draft, not in terms of just how we're executing it, um, but I think we all feel a special responsibility to do a spectacular, as best we can, meaningful uh, uh, draft uh, for, for so many people, and I think that special sort of responsibility uh, is driving everybody right now. We'll go to Kevin Draper and then Colleen Kane with the Chicago Tribune. Hi guys. Uh, I was wondering what we've learned over the last month from kind of doing remote broadcasts and things in terms of what what sort of lower quality video feed or audio feed viewers will accept or kind of where they'll understand and, and be charmed by the house shots and, and, and where they won't and, and where they expect kind of really high quality things. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that since, you know, we've, we've been doing this from day one here at ESPN. I, I think, you know, you said it, I, I, I think viewers have an unbelievable new understanding and tolerance for, for you know, anything that that we need to do at this point. You know, I've, I've watched shows on other networks where people are in their basements or um, the signal isn't that strong or, you know, people have headphones on or, or ear, you know, um, AirPods or whatever they have in their ears. And, you know, I, I just will tell you that we have not gotten any feedback from viewers, you know, um, being disappointed in the quality or, um, or what anything looks like. Um, you know, I think people understand it, and I think that they're appreciative that we are trying to do our best to create some normalcy, even though we can't, and also that, that we are being as safe as possible. I think, you know, I would just say that I think everybody understands it's an extraordinary situation and that, you know, what they see is not what they're used to or what we'll hopefully go back to at some point. But, you know, I think there's some things that, you know, when we get through all this, we'll we'll learn from, and also you may see more of, you know, like we have so many home cameras now with our talent um, that, you know, in the future when there's major breaking news, uh, you know, we used to rely on a lot of phone calls in, and, and now, you know, we've, we've had everybody's home um, outfitted such that, you know, it will allow us to get many more faces and voices on TV instantly once we get through this. And that's just, you know, kind of one of the, the good things I hope that'll come from this. Also, you know, just the, you know, how we've all learned and adjusted, you know, to use um, different virtual technology to replace some in-person meetings and uh, communicate with each other. I don't think those will go away. Uh, 